Here's the topic for the video. So, I want to I want to get into the importance, you guys, of having a support network. And that support network could be it could be just one person. Um, I mean, that support network could be God. It could be no person. It, God's your ultimate support network cuz that's the one that's the one thing like let's say you have a group of guys in your life and like that they're your those are your crew that's your that's your crew you know or you have a guy you have like a therapist or you something uh who knows we don't know the future you know people things happen um i i've lost friends man i've had a lot of friends die uh young in their 20s in my life cuz i grew up in the oxycotton era you know that's what that's just to age myself, you know, I'm 37. So when I was in high school, Oxycontin was everywhere. Everybody was doing it. It was easier to get than weed. Uh, nobody really understood how bad it was until people started dying. And I started having friends in high school overdose and die, you know, and it was like, it was this huge thing, you know, um, those of you that are old enough to, to remember this period in history, it was like the opiate epidemic, man, it was a huge deal. Um, and then that led to more heroin usage and, and it empowered the cartels in Mexico because they got all these, you know, blue collar, you know, regular ass type people hooked on basically heroin. And then they, you know, cut the supply pharmaceutically and people go other routes, whatever. In, in any case, I've seen a lot of people die. I've lost a lot of friends and, uh, I've been very close to death. I'm very, very, in touch with the very temporary nature of anything physical, anything external. So that's why having a support system that, that comes from within your own, your own individual relationship with God is the single most important thing in your life, because that's one thing nobody can take away from you from the moment you're born to the moment you die. Nobody can really touch that. Actually, they can try. They can, they can tempt you, they can lure you, they can distract you, but ultimately it's up to you whether or not you want to cultivate that relationship and put energy into that relationship and use God as a support system in your life and build trust in God over time by doing that more over time and, re and having life experience that, that proves to you that God is trustworthy and your faith grows and then this thing develops and then you have you have a support system that nobody can really take from you so that would be the most valuable support system of all and all any other support system you have in life should just be an extension of that so if you have other people in your life that that can serve as sort of like support supporting cast in your life people that you can go to when you're struggling with some with something people who will tell you the truth people who have your best interest at heart Ideally, these are people who also have a have a level of uh, relationship with God like that themselves, where like that's their anchor point. They're anchored in that. And so that makes them capable of being sort of like a, a, an ambassador for God. And we get to sort of help each other communicate with God, actually, by communicate, communicating with each other if we have our own personal relationship with God. So I could say it's, it's almost like each of us have our own individual perspective on things. It's almost like there's this analogy. This, I think this comes from, from Buddhist uh, lore, but there's this analogy about a bunch of uh, blind people touching an elephant and, and arguing about what, what it is that they're touching. Because one guy's touching the leg, one guy's touching the belly, one guy's touching the, the trunk, whatever. But if you sort of take everybody's collective description you could come up with a with a clear model of what what you're dealing with, you know, and you could maybe figure out that oh, it's an elephant, but you'd need all of these different perspectives to arrive at that conclusion. That makes sense. So that's why it's very important to have other people in your life that can reflect things back to you, that can offer perspectives that maybe you yourself don't have access to. As much as you are connected to God, you know, there's still things we have blind spots. So and life throws stuff at us that's hard, um, especially when we decide to ascend spiritually. That's when life really starts throwing stuff at us. So very important to have somebody in your life, ideally like a group of people, 
but I know it's hard because there's just not that many of us. Hence this internet activity, the content, because this way we can, a lot more of us can find each other than we ever really could without this technology. And it's important, you know, I made friendships through this YouTube channel already that I think are going to be lifelong friendships because we've connected on, on something very deep, something very real and meaningful. And uh, also I have friends that kind of got me into this uh, whole YouTube content creation thing that are friends in real life for me that are on this path or on retention that are celibate, that are doing their best to put God first in every area of their life. And so that's, that's their foundation. That's their anchor point. That's where they're coming from. And so those, those friends, those very few friends I have like that, I keep them very close. And I attribute a lot of my success in having a long streak of retention to that. Because lately it's gotten very difficult and I've, I've felt the more, more temptation lately uh, than I have at any other point on this journey. And I don't know if that has to do with how long it's been. Um, I don't know if that's environmental. I don't know if that's who, I, I don't know what it is. Spiritual attack, I don't know. I just know that it is that way. I, I'm definitely more often than at any other point in this journey, I'm having the thought of like, maybe you could just, you know, just one time, maybe just one time, that kind, that kind of thinking, right? And maybe I could just one time and maybe it wouldn't be a big deal. I, the truth is, I don't know, but maybe it'll put, maybe it'll get me in my head. Maybe it will sabotage this level of esteem in myself that I've cultivated over this period of time of having stuck to something, been disciplined and really, really stuck to something to the point where I've gotten some very real results from it. So I don't want to sabotage that, especially for just a momentary thing. And then who knows, you know, that, that could be a snowball effect it's just one little motion and next thing you know i mean maybe there's a there's an avalanche that comes from just that one decision but we don't know um so when i'm in this temptation lately you know more so than the temptation for this is, is the temptation to get to get it with a woman and because i've had more women approaching me lately that that aspect of the of the semen retention phenomena uh, has really just kind of kicked in the high gear lately for me personally that the female attraction aspect of it it's it's hard it's getting hard for me not to let the not not to let it go to my head like I'm trying I'm making a concerted effort to like remain humble and and focused on God and focused on my goals because I'm getting flirted with so damn much um by girls of all age. I mean, I don't know what, like it used to be, there was like a certain demographic, it was a certain type that would like tend to notice me. Now it's like, man, <clears throat> moms, grandmas, old lady. I mean, I've got, I got, I've had like older women coming up to me, trying to hook me up with their daughters lately. This is like a whole new thing. That's never happened to me before that's happening regularly lately. They're like, Hey, are you single? Talk to my daughter. Here's her number. <laughs> what? Like usually you meet the girl and then you're afraid to meet the parents. Cause what if they don't like you now I meet the parents first and they're like, Hey, please date my daughter. And I'm like, well, excuse me. Who's your daughter? What? Uh, and then I've got girls that are like 17, 18, 19. I don't know. I don't ask how old they are. They just look too young, but I got girls that age you know, just flirting with me like crazy. I got women old enough to be my mom trying to get with me. And dude, it's like, it's a good thing. I mean, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that God made me somebody who can attract the opposite sex. Like, I guess that's a good thing, but also at the same time, it's kind of not a good thing. Not when, not when you are 
not when your goals are are so spiritual in nature and they're so personal. You know, like I'm not my goals in life are not to have a bunch of hot sex. You know, like I I've, I've been there. I've done that. It, it didn't fulfill me. It didn't complete me. It didn't take me anywhere I really wanted to go. You know, if anything, it distracted me from all of that. It, it it slowed me down. If anything, maybe I had some fun times, but ultimately, none of them really advanced my life in any meaningful way. So, like now, I, I just want to I want to advance my life in meaningful ways. I want to improve my character. I want to get closer to God. I want to achieve something in life that that really matters. That makes this planet a better place when I leave it. And that's, that's really what I'm thinking about. So having all of this attention from women and all of these opportunities to have, you know, pleasurable temporary experiences is a distraction. And I'm finding myself less focused because of it. So it's becoming a little bit of an issue. It's kind of throwing me off. I feel, I don't feel as on spiritually as I, as I was. And it's the, it's the women's stuff, man. It's just where my head goes with it and how I'm like, man, just think, just like there's one girl in particular right now that I just, I think about her. Like, she's not even really a part of my life necessarily, but she's become a part of my mind. And I'm just noticing like, well, shit. You know I mean? All the time I spent thinking about her was time that like before she came around, I was thinking more about like scripture. I was thinking more about life goals. Just thinking more about what do I need to do day to day? You know what I mean? Like practical real life shit. And now and now my mind's like, you know, oh, all of the wonderful experiences we could have together. Oh, you know, we just run off into the sunset together and you know, whatever. Um, and then also of course the, the biological, st- the, the urge to, you know what is still there for sure. Um, but again, I'm, I'm like, I've learned the hard way, you know, soul ties are no joke. Um, women are very powerful beings as are we. And, um, this stuff can get real messy real fast and you can go into stuff with the best intentions and you can do your best to vet somebody and think that you they're clean and clear and then you could find out a year down the road that there's some crazy shit going on with them i mean it gets complicated so we have to be very careful so back to the point of the video the support system this is why having having men in your life you know or maybe you're lucky enough to have like platonic female friendships where nothing's nothing's weird but men are better cuz they're going to understand you know directly what it is you're you're dealing with so yeah man if i didn't have friends in my life that were also on this path that i could go to and just kind of bounce stuff off of it's like yo i've been talking to this girl thinking about it a lot i'm feeling really tempted to xyz and then just to have somebody be like yo when's the last time you prayed like when's the last time you hit your knees When's, when's the last time you got into the scripture? When's the last time you did some breath work? Things like that. Just these reminders, you know, and just like that support of like, you got this, bro. Like you're strong. You know, you know how dangerous this can be. So pray about it. Proceed with caution. Stay, stay close to your, your A team, your homies, like you, the, the ones in your life that, that really are riding with you, which as you progress on this journey, though that's going to get more and more clear <clears throat> you'll lose people which is good because those people will then get replaced with people who are much more aligned with you right and then and then you get to have this relationship with these people where you help e- accelerate each other's growth spiritually so yeah that's enough for this video again i always just my jaws get flapping and uh yeah you know the deal but all right Cheers, you guys. Uh, Keep killing it out there. Keep slaying demons. Keep breaking strongholds. Keep making this world a better place by making you a better place. All right, let's go.